Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm coming to you from my basement instead of my shop. Because it's too cold outside to do what I'm about to show you. So when you're restoring a motorcycle or anything else, every once in a while you're gonna run into these specialty bolts that are rusty and need to be cleaned up. Now your options are buy them if you can still get them. And in a lot of cases they're too expensive. Use a different bolt which might not look good or try to clean them up and plate them yourself, zinc plate. And I'm gonna show you today how you can do that on the cheap and get pretty decent results. So let's take a look. So to quickly get started, what are we dealing with here? So just normal household items for the most part. I've got a repurposed crock pot. You could either steal the one your wife doesn't use or get one at a yard sale, tag sale, garage sale, rummage sale, whatever you call it where you're from. But it makes it easy to clean parts. I've got a couple of tanks here. Uh, one's just water, one's muriatic acid, and one's my plating solution. And I'm gonna show you basically what goes into those tanks and how to make this work. So let's get into it. All right, so here's how I do this. Crock-Pot is filled up with Purple Power, which is the degreaser that I like. It's set to low. I've got a bunch of bolts in there right now. It gets to about 130 degrees, and that does a great job cleaning things. Out of there to the wire wheel to actually get the part ready to plate. It's got to be really nice and clean before you even try to plate it. Muriatic acid, I dunk it in there and just let the surface clean up a little bit and I'll show you that. Distilled water to clean things off. And then the plating solution and the power supply. You don't need a power supply like this. I use that because I have it. Um, and we'll talk about that in detail next. All right, so the secret to doing all of this is the plating tank. This is a small container because I don't do a lot of parts. And all we've got in here is one part distilled white vinegar to two parts distilled water. So I fill it up about a third of the way with the vinegar, then two thirds of the way with the water. I dump in a handful of salt or Epsom salt, and that's just to help it conduct. And then I've got a fish tank heater here to warm the solution up a bit. Now I've done it with and without the heater to get better results with it. Now to prepare the tank and the solution, you need a couple of zinc plates. Now, these don't have to be anything fancy. You can get these on Amazon for next to nothing. When you first start out, you take your power supply and you connect it negative to one side, positive to the other, and let it, let it run for a couple of hours. And what that'll do is get the zinc ions from the plates in the plating solution. It's important to do that then once you've got that done, to actually plate, you connect your two zinc anodes together, and then they become the positive side of your circuit. And then I use a little piece of copper bar to suspend my parts from, and that is the negative side. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take a cleanup part when we're ready. We're going to hang it from a piece of copper wire. We're going to drop it in here. It's going to touch this copper. That's going to make the connection and start the plating process. So let's take a quick look at how all of that goes. All right, so let's check out one bolt from start to finish. So I'm going to go into my tank over here. And I'm just going to grab a bigger bolt from there. And let's take a look at our starting point. So here's the bolt. It's basically clean. Um, however, still a little bit rusty and needs to be cleaned up. So I'm going to take it over to the wire wheel and we're going to run it through there a bit to get it clean. So let's go ahead and do that. Putting on my safety glasses. All right, so here's that bolt after being wire wheeled, and it's basically 
good for the next step. It's not absolutely perfect. I don't need it to be perfect. You could continue to polish it if you wanted to. So the next thing we're gonna do is the muriatic acid, then clean in the water, and then in the tank. So let's do that. All right, so I've got the piece hanging from a piece of copper wire. We're gonna dump it in the acid tank. And when you do that, it bubbles quite a bit. You wanna let it go until it stops bubbling. From there we go into the water, just to be clean. And then from there, we're gonna go into that plating solution. So I'm gonna drop this in there and then I'm gonna show you what's going on. And I'm not sure where my power supply is set right now, but we'll take a quick look. All right. Now we're in the solution. And if you take a look, you can see the bubbles coming off of that bolt. Some people will say, oh, you know, that's too many bubbles. Some people will say it's not few, or it's too few, excuse me. We are drawing about a half an amp, which might be a little bit high for this part, but I'm gonna let it go for about a minute or two, and then we're gonna take a look at it. So while this is in there, we can talk a little bit about the power supply. I've done this before using just an old phone charger, an old, wall plug-in, anything that's capable of supplying about an amp, you're gonna, you're gonna need. You can do it with a couple of D-cell batteries as well. There's a formula to figure out per surface area how much current you really need, and if you go to the Caswell plating site, that calculator is available. And if I remember it right, the math is per square inch, you need about 0 0.142 amps. The voltage doesn't matter, it's the current that's being drawn. Um, this bolt probably is about a half an amp to begin with. You could use multiple and you just crank up the current. We've been in there for about two minutes and the plating process is doing its thing. Based on the way that looks, I'm going to let it go for another minute or two and we're going to take it out and see what it looks like. All right, so while the part is in there, let me talk a little bit about solution. So if you watch YouTube videos on this process, there's a lot. And you get some really great results with pre-purchase kits, the Caswell kit, and I've used that myself. You can get your parts to almost look like chrome. Uh, with this do-it-yourself solution, you're gonna get a little bit more gray. And then if you add chemicals to this, you can get it brighter but this works fine for me, right? So we are, we've been in there for about three or four minutes. Let's just take a quick look at what we've got now. Missing a little bit under the head of the bolt or it's a little bit darker under the head of the bolt there and that's where that wire was to begin with. So I'm gonna let it sit for another minute or two to finish and then we're gonna take it out. Now, do I care? what the body of the bolt and the threads of the bolt actually look like, since on this particular bolt, you're never gonna see any of it. Nope, not really interested, but I do want that plating on there. And then one quick thing, handy reason to have one of these power supplies is you can see the current draw while you're using it and you can adjust it. You don't have to go crazy. As long as you've got a circuit and you see the fact that you're pulling current, it's gonna work. It's handy to be able to look at that meter and make sure that everything is flowing because if you drop it in there and you don't see any bubbles, you definitely don't have any current flowing. The other thing you'll notice, I keep the muriatic acid covered when I'm not using it. You don't want to be breathing that in. And really, you don't want to be breathing any of these fumes either, so make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. And then finally, when you're using the wire wheel or the polisher, Using your bare hands is probably not a good idea. I do it all the time, but my hands suffer for it. Wear gloves and make sure you wear safety glasses. All right, so we've been in there for about six or seven minutes at this point. I'm gonna pull the part out and watch my display here. You'll see people say, oh, you know, shut your thing off or break the circuit with the button. You don't have to do that. You take the piece out, it breaks the circuit anyway. I'm gonna run it in a little distilled water here. 
And then let's take a look at this part. So here we are out of the tank. The head looks fine, plated with zinc. Get a little darker spots here and darker on the threads, but the whole thing has been zinc plated. So finally, really all I care about on this bolt is what is that head gonna look like when we're done? So let me just polish that up quick. And there we have it. That's good enough for me. So a little bit of metal polish on a rag and your bolt looks pretty decent. Now I say pretty decent. This is a bolt that goes on an undercarriage of an old Honda. What happens when you work in the basement? It goes on the undercarriage of an old Honda three-wheeler that I'm restoring. You're never gonna see it. I just want it to be protected. Can you get better results in this? Yes, you can. Do a better job cleaning that bolt up to begin with. Really polish the heck out of it. Tighter connections makes a big difference. And then if you want it to be bright, you gotta get better chemicals. You can watch some other videos on that. But for a five minute DIY, I want this thing back together and not rusting. This is gonna do the trick. Hopefully it does a trick for you too, guys. Thanks for watching. Leave me comments if you have any questions.